Now that we can solve systems without graphing using the substitution method, we're going to look at another method that sometimes is easier, and it's called the elimination method. We use it for solving systems of equations, and it makes use of the addition principle. So when I add, same thing on the left, same thing on the right, it's not going to change. Same story as if we have two things equal to each other, so a system, an equation, is equal to the right-hand side. If I add those two sides together, the new equation is also still true. So that first example we're going to look at. We want to solve the system 2x plus 3y equals 13, 4x minus 3y equals 17. So what the addition principle says, since the left side is equal to the right side, left side is equal to the right side, if I add the two left ones together and I add the two right ones together, those additions have to be equal to each other. So if we're going to use the substitution method, we have to solve one of them for a variable. We have to isolate something. Right now, none of them are isolated. So let's just say, take the first one and I want to isolate it for y. So this is our only knowledge so far of how to solve systems without graphing, is using the substitution method. So if I scooch 2x to the other side, <coughs> divide by 3, y is negative 2 thirds x plus 13 thirds. So that was my first equation, and now I want to substitute wherever I see y in the second one with this. So what do you notice? We have to deal with fractions. In this case, it is nice, but let's just say it wasn't a 3 and things were going to cancel. We have to deal with fractions. Whenever we deal with fractions, generally we make more mistakes. So how can we kind of get around that problem? So we're going to look at that same system, but solve it using the elimination method. So sometimes it's easier to do substitution. If one of them is isolated, go for it. In this case, it's going to be nice to use the elimination because we bank on that addition principle. What happens if I add these two lines together? So if I add these, so anything on the left, anything on the right, every single column, we want to line up the x's, add the x's together add the y's, add the constants. So if I add these equations, I'm looking at 6x, and what happens to these y's? I've got a positive 3 and a negative 3. Those are going to be gone. And over here we're looking at 20, 30 all together. So when we added those equations in that way, we eliminated, we got rid of the y variable. So now we have an equation with one variable that we can solve for. So what is x in this case? x is equal to 5. So we solved the first part of the system, the x-coordinate. Now we need the y. We've got two different choices. Now we substitute, which we're comfortable with. Plug 5 back in for x, solve for y. I'm going to plug it into the first. You could plug it in the second and see you get the same exact thing. So 10 plus 3y is 13. So 3y is equal to 3 if we subtract 10 from both sides. So y was equal to 1. So our solution goes through the point 5, 1. And with that elimination method, we didn't have to deal with any fractions. In this case, it wouldn't turn out nice anyway. But when it's already set up like that in that standard form and we're eliminating one of the variables, we might as well save us some time. So again, how can we check and make sure that this actually is the solution? Plug it back in to both equations, make sure it satisfies both of them at the same time. All right, so go ahead and turn the page. There's two for you to try. Solve those using the elimination method. So what did you notice about these two? We eliminated different variables in both cases, but we still got solutions. Because when we add those first two together, it's already in the standard form y is going to be eliminated. So I have 3x is equal to 9. The y's are gone. We can divide by 3. x is equal to 3. And when we have that, we can plug it back into either equation. This one's going to be the easiest. 
3 plus y is equal to 5, so y is equal to 2. So the solution to this system, they cross at one point through 3, 2. So again, the little squiggles on the side, the little braces, they just mean the set. The set of all points that satisfy that system. Only one point satisfies the system. They intersect at one spot. So in that case, we eliminated for y. In this next one, when we added these two together, we eliminated the x's, positive and negative. They were gone. We have negative 4y is equal to 8. Dividing by negative 4, y is equal to negative 2. And again, we can plug it back into either of these to solve for x. I'm just going to run with the first and see what we get. So negative 2x is equal to negative 2. If we divide both sides by negative 2, we get x is equal to 1. So solution to this system goes through the point 1 minus 2. And if you weren't sure that these were correct, again, what can you always do? Plug them back into the originals. Make sure that it satisfies both at the same time. Or you could graph them if you wanted to. Time consuming, but sometimes it's helpful to see a picture. All right, so the next one. How is this different from what we've seen so far? If I add these two together, am I eliminating any variables? So I have 3y and 3y, but if I add those together, I'm going to get 6y. Nothing's going to cancel out. So sometimes we have to alter one of the equations. If I multiply everything on the left and everything on the right by the same, uh, the equation that results is going to be equivalent. It's just going to look a little bit different. So what do we need? If I'm trying to evaluate, <laughs> evaluate eliminate 3y, if I want to get rid of the y's, what has to happen? One of these signs needs to change. So when I add it, it'll cancel out. So I'm going to multiply this second one, times it by negative 1. So the equivalent system, we haven't changed the first one, but now every single term in there needs to be multiplied by negative 1. So we're looking at negative x minus 3y minus 7. Now if I go to add those together, what happens? I have one factor of x, my y's are gone, and I'm left with 1. That one's really nice. It's solved for x. So we can plug it back into any one of these to solve for y. I'm going to go for the first. 3y is equal to 8. So I've got 2 plus 3y is 8. 3y is equal to 6. Dividing by 3, y is equal to 2. So the system has a solution it intersects at the point 1, 2. And again, we can plug it back in to the originals, make sure that it satisfies both at the same time. So sometimes you have to alter one. If it's already given to you in the standard form and we have the same exact thing, we need to multiply one of those equations by a factor of a negative to get an equivalent system. So go ahead and the next page and take that system. What is going to be the easiest thing to eliminate? The x's, you'll need to alter it by a factor of a negative. Regardless of which equation you multiply by a factor of a negative, we get the same answer. Doesn't really matter what you run with. I'm going to multiply the first one by a negative. Hopefully some of you did the second and you can see we get the same result. So equivalent system. Every single term has to be multiplied by a negative. So negative 5x, negative 3y, negative 17. And the second one was unchanged. But now when we add these, what happens? My x's are going to be gone. I've got negative 5y is equal to negative 20. Divide by negative 5. y was equal to positive 4. And again, we can plug it back into any of them. I usually just go with the first. Plus 12 is equal to 17. So 5x is going to be equal to 5. Divide by 5, x was equal to 1. So if you multiply the second one by a negative, eliminated, did you get the same answer? Should have, if there weren't any mistakes. Solution set crosses at one point, 1, 4. 
And again, we can check, plug them into both, make sure they're both satisfied. Draw a picture, look at the intersection, see that it happens at 1, 4.